and keeping children safe. And this is uh, one of the things that they're working on, and it has to do with child abuse. Child abuse is, is uh, one of the main causes for suicides among our kids. So uh, I just want to make sure that give it your close attention. It's, it's very heartbreaking, but it, it's important, and we need to all, we all need to be aware. So with that, if you can start the video again, thank you. Floor, I was screaming, he closed the cell door. He can't punch me over and over again in the face. Domestic violence and child sexual abuse and child neglect happens in this state. And I just became physically abusive. I got thrown around by the kid. After the physical and verbal abuse later on in the evening, the sexual abuse started. This program goes to the heart of that problem, the damage that was done, and we enter it with them. They provide that relationship. They provide that family. We allow them to feel the pain that we're able to heal in it. My heart is healing. I'm learning to shove away the lies about who I am, and I'm embracing the truth. I feel like it's a restoration. For the first time in a long time, I'm feeling with my heart again. By the time they leave, their faces are soft. There's a change that happens. The other day I skipped down the stairs when nobody was watching. And today I celebrate. It is a good day to live. It is a good day to know that I'm loved. And nothing can take that away. We fight for what is right. Stand up, you men. Stand up. Arise. You are the warriors. This is going to stop. I'm ready to fight for the rights of my grandchildren. This program is working. It inspires people to be a beacon of hope. Today, there are a lot of Native people that are rising up. We see in the last Native people that we have healthy communities, we have healthy villages. Yeah, healthy people, healthy families, this is the answer. With that strength, with the passion the people have, we know what's gonna happen. We met some of those people in the uh, <clears throat> in the video. They, they came to present to the State Suicide Prevention Council, and every one of them started out as volunteers for the great cause at South at the uh, South Central Foundation. 
proves the fact that they, they do have money now but to start out on combating suicide or, or child abuse or any other um, item that will help to reduce suicides among our youth, we can do it. And if there's no money, then we're just, we're going to have to do it anyway. I'm going to dispense with the um, with introductions of a noted guest here, but I would like to ask the State Suicide Prevention Council members if they would stand. They're just finishing a meeting here in Juneau. Some of them stayed over for this. Thank you. And I also would like to thank President Ed Thomas for allowing us this special session because it's, it's in addition to the, the other um, Native Issues forums and, and appreciate his willingness to continue the fight against um, suicides among our, our young people. So, Mr. President, thank you very much for, for allowing us to do this. Um, suicide prevention is, is my, my goal in life. I've, I've told people that at someday I would like to say that I saved one life because when you save one life, you save many lives. You save the future children who haven't been born, grandchildren, and, and just knowing that it, it, they have a chance to, to grow up and become the tribal leader that is so needed yet in this whole state. So I'm really honored that so many people have taken up this cause our two speakers here today are both um, well informed on, on suicide prevention and um, Barbara, many of you know, is, is a survivor. And Barbara actually at one time worked for Central Council and, and now she lives in, in Anchorage. And, um, but I, I just want to say Thank you to those of you that, that are here today because I know that this is something that you're all wanting to, to, to see come to an end and to go back to the way it was before. Because 200 years ago, there was no suicide among our natives, and now there are so many. And I also wanted to show this video because when the statistics came out after the video they told us about with child abuse, one instance causes an increase of five times the more likelihood of a child to commit suicide. And after five, five different times it goes up to 50, 50 times. So it's it just part of the whole picture. If we can do whatever we can to to make sure that, that child abuse is non-existent among our people, then we'll have made great progress. So our first speaker today is the youth rep for Central Council, Executive Council. And as other youth reps in the past, they, they're not just considered youth leaders, they're actually tribal leaders because they get involved in, in the um, goings on of the Executive Council, and I'm really proud that they uh, that they take up that that mission. And so, to introduce our first guest is um, Harold Martin. Thank you. Good afternoon. Uh, it gives me great pleasure, and I'm honored to introduce our first speaker for today. She just happens to be my great niece. Her name is Megan Gregory. Her ticket name is Kulkat. She is of the Eagle Moiety and comes from the Wushkitan clan. She was born and raised in Cake. She's a graduate of Cake High School, the home of the Thunderbirds. Her parents are Charles and Loretta Gregory, and her grandparents are Roy and Evelyn Martin. She is currently a student at the University of Alaska Southeast, and she's also currently the youth representative for Central Council Thicken and Ivy Indian Tribes of Alaska. She's the past youth advisor representative for Sea Alaska Corporation, 
and currently working with uh, Central Council of Thickenhide Indian Tribes of Alaska with uh, economic development. And uh, she's got some things going on with suicide prevention. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Loretta Gregory. And Megan. <laughs> I'm sorry, I said the uh, red agreement. Megan, Megan Gregory. <laughs> Love you, dude. Thank you for that introduction, Uncle Harold. Good afternoon. Thank you for joining us today. As you mentioned, my name is Megan Gregory. I'm originally from Cake, and I've lived in Juneau for the past six years. I currently serve as the youth representative for Central Council Clinton Haida, and during my experiences as the youth representative for Sea Alaska, as well as Central Council Clinton Haida, I have become actively involved in suicide prevention initiatives. Suicide is a serious problem, public health problem in Alaska that needs to be addressed immediately. Suicide rates among Alaska Native peoples are higher than any other ethnicity in the state and the entire country. Young people between the ages of 15 to 24, especially young men, continue to be at high risk for suicide. The suicide rate for men ages 15 to 24 is 56 for 100,000 people. For young women, it's 16 for 100,000 people. For Alaska Natives, the rate for this age group among young men is 141 for every 100,000 people and 50 for every 100,000 among young women. These high suicide rates cause our society to reel with devastation in our families and in our communities. We have much work ahead of us. Alaska is meant for better things. Together, we as Alaskans need to work together to keep building on those good things and build on the wonderful people that make Alaska. As a Southeast Alaska Suicide Prevention Task Force member, I have created a Youth Ambassador Program that will offer opportunity and exposure to high school students throughout Southeast Alaska. It is important for us to connect with our youth, and we want to let them know that we are here to support them. We are interested not only in the prevention of suicide, but also in enhancing participants' skills while developing new ones, and continuing to expand an established network of Native leaders. We will accomplish this by providing a program that grants an opportunity for students to attend meetings with, their, with a member of the Southeast Alaska Suicide Prevention Task Force as their mentor and encourage them to be a strong, positive advocate in their community. It is time we talk openly about suicide. It is not a taboo topic. Suicide is never okay. And now is the time to make sure each and every individual knows that there are options, and suicide is not one of them. I am proud to announce that the Youth Ambassador Program was just recently endorsed by Southeast Alaska Suicide Prevention Task Force. As the new community project assistant, I will be working to implement this program in Southeast by August 2011. I will also be working to promote a youth ambassador program statewide by 2012. I am currently working with legislators and the State Suicide Prevention Council to see this program become a reality. The statewide program would be similar to the Southeast program, but would include two ambassadors from every region in Alaska for a total of 14 youth ambassadors. I believe these programs will empower our youth and give them hope. As a young Clinket leader from CAKE, I feel I represent the newest generation of leadership. It is my ultimate desire to become an outstanding native leader in the community and the state. I just recently volunteered to become a coach for the Girls on the Run After School program. I encourage all women to participate and get involved in this, in this program in their community. Every community is welcomed 
and encouraged to participate. In fact, Girls on the Run is offered internationally. When I interviewed to become a coach, I was informed that there's a lack of Native women participating in the program, which has led to a lack of Native youth participants. The goal of Girls on the Run is to empower girls early in their lives to find strength, courage, self-respect from within, and draw upon it as they face the challenges of adolescence and adulthood. This program instills self-esteem, self-respect through physical training, health education, life skills development, and mentoring relationships. There will also be a program offered for boys called Let Us Run in the fall of 2011. I encourage all men to keep this in mind and participate and get involved with that program as well. We should all consider ourselves leaders of today. As, our, as your youth representative, I only have a few months left to serve on the Executive Council, but I can assure you, even after my term has ended, I will work diligently to make sure that these goals are accomplished. I have had the rare opportunity to work with the Sea Alaska Board, as well as the Executive Council, Clink and Nida, and they have been valuable experiences that have broadened my horizons. I hope to see more interest in the youth representative, re representative position this year at Tribal Assembly because it truly is a life-changing experience. Through this experience, I have been inspired to create more youth opportunities to encourage more students to get involved, take the initiative, and make a change in our state. I want to see our youth strive in every way possible, and there is absolutely no reason why this cannot be accomplished. Today, I encourage you to think about what it is you can do to make a positive impact in somebody else's life. And I hope to see you, I hope that you will do this for somebody. Please work with me as we continue to build up the good in our people, as well as face challenges Alaskans face. Together we can craft the solutions that we all need. Let us get to work and make good things happen for our people, for Alaska, and for our country. Thank you for allowing me to speak today, and thank you for the honor of allowing me to serve as your youth representative for Central Council Clinkett and Haida. Finish Chish. The video was so touching, and we're so proud of that young lady that just spoke, and we hope there'll be others following her. And as an elder, it just makes me so proud of that young lady, and I know there are a lot of other young people that are interested and that have been touched by this very <coughs> touching subject. The video we just saw hits home to all of us, I know, especially to mothers, to aunties, to grandmothers, to fathers, grandparents. I am so glad for everyone that showed up today. And the young lady I'm going to introduce has been touched by this. So it is an honor to introduce Barbara Franks, Whitcraft Frank. Her clinket name is Nietzsche Tla. She was born in Huna, Huna. She's of the Raven Moiety. She is the Knachadi from the Box House. Her father comes from the Box House, Kushtehin. Kagwantan. Her mother's name is Kajuik. She is Du Wasagan Yudu Asak Tla. So it is a great pleasure to introduce to you my dear friend, and at once I considered her my daughter, Barbara Whitcraft Frank. I 
I'm humbled to be here today in your midst and to have my sister, my Kakwantanyeti sister, introduce me. Because when I was growing up, a long time ago in Hana, um, our hands were slapped because we tried to introduce ourselves. We would go to payoff parties and everything, and instead they taught us Spanish. And when we tried to dance and show what the latest move was, they showed us, showed us how to do the um, square dancing. So I know how to square dance and I know how to count to 10 in Spanish. But that didn't take me very far. When I grew up, I wanted to be a special education teacher. But I got married two days after I graduated from high school. And so then my life took over as being a mother and a wife. And so I never thought in my wildest dreams that I would attend college. Say, so, you know, you never know what's going to happen in your life. And tomorrow's promise to no one. My youngest son was 23 when he completed his suicide. And that was two days before my husband died of cancer. I'm glad my husband was in a coma when that happened because I don't know how that would have affected him. But I have to tell you, says when I went back to school and all these other young students and everything, you know, they kind of look at the outside of the book and everything, you know. And I was studying the chapters, I was studying the questions, I was looking at the internet questions, I was looking at talking to other students and everything, you know, and they'd come in and they'd ace the test. And my head hurt so much that I just had everything crammed in there. And finally, the professor told me, he said, Barb, you want everything to be right. But I said, I know how this person felt. I, I talked to people like that. I talked to a person like this. I know how that could be the right answer. And he said, no, according to the book, this is the answer we chose as being right. OK, I'll play it your way. <laughs> but. I finished. I got my associate's degree in human services. And I said, um, I didn't know there was, I mean, I was pushing for the first Alaskans Institute scholarship program they had. And I, I didn't know I qualified. But they said, go ahead, fill it out. And so you had to go through this really long process of how you're being selected to participate in their program. And so I had five companies that I wanted to work in, kind of work in, but none of them were with suicide prevention. No one wanted to talk about that. So I finally got, um, somebody came in, like the last ditch effort, and he said, I want someone to work here that's not afraid to say the word. I said, woohoo, we found a match, that was me. But I have to tell you one of the other questions that they had at the First Alaskans Institute, and Janie Leesk is the one that, um, that um, started this conversation. She said, what does it mean to be Native? It was like they had turned that water faucet on, and the tears kept on running down my face, and I had to you know, um, really think about that question. Because for the longest time and during my 25 years of marriage, there was sporadic moments that I would include myself in going to a payoff party or going to a naming party or going to a 40-day party or something like that, but not to be really involved in what was going on around me. But I have to tell you, it says, you know, it says, um, when I was younger and I want to say hello to my sister over there. She's the one that made my tape that I'm using today, Mary. But um, you know how sneaky my mom was. She says, you know, if she had something that she wanted to tell us, you know, he says, you know how kids are, you know, if he says, you better not do this, and you kind of go, oh, you know. But I liked her style because she would uh, send us to our aunties and our uncles, and I want to acknowledge my uncle and auntie here today, uh, William and Harvey Marvin. And um, we would go and we would hear stories from them. But I didn't know that those stories that they were talking about was the ones that would help me later on in life on how to deal with my son's suicide. 
because it says, you know, this is like Mr. Sanderson knows over here. It says, you know, that resiliency that you get from your, your great ancestors, you know, that's the blood that is flowing through your being. That is where you're gonna get your strength. That is where you're gonna be able to survive what happened. I love the Cariente family over here, as you know, we would join each other's arms and we would say, peace be with you in church. I think about that on Sundays, you know, and you remember the men and women that go out fishing, you know. To all of our military men and women, the one we just lost the other day, Leslie Williams, says, but you know, it says no matter what kind of loss you have, it is a loss, it is a person. There are families left behind. American Foundation for Suicide Prevention says, you know, every 15 minutes there's someone that dies by suicide. And every 16 minutes someone is left to deal with that suicide. But I'm glad and I have to tell you, being up here today is an answer to a prayer. Because 13 years ago, it says, you know, I used to be teased that there's probably 10 people that you don't know in Juno. But I said there were other times where that was the loneliest time in my life because at that time, people didn't want to talk about it. They had to shove it under the carpet, they had to act like it didn't happen. I better not say how's life going because it might make her cry. So I had to turn that around and I had to say, um, I had to stop saying that my son was only 23 when he killed himself to think about it differently and say, I was blessed with 23 years of his life. Because who am I to judge what was going on in his time? And even that person, like we talked with the young people, and Kate and Eric um, from the Alaska Mental Health Board had helped us reach out to so many people in the last four days. And through the council and Bill Martin's guidance that we're talking to other people. We had our meeting the other day at the Juno Police Department, and I have to tell you, I saw this young man that gave me the notification of death about my son. And I said, if there was anybody else on God's green earth that had to give me that message, I'm glad it was him. Because he told me, he said, you know, I know how you raised your son. I knew your husband. I knew there were outstanding young men. But there's, I, I wish I never had to give this kind of message to someone, much less someone that I knew. And so at the end, he said, can I say a prayer for you? I was in Tulsa, Oklahoma, and he was here in Juno. And he said, can I say a prayer with you? As I make my travels through the Alaska Consortium, Alaska Native Tribal Health Consortium, I go to a lot of communities. I see a lot of people, I see a lot of the hurt. I could step on the ground and feel the hurt, the pain, the sorrow, the tears that have dropped to the ground because that's where that person had murdered someone, turned around, and then killed himself. These are our young people that we're losing. We need your help. When I gave a presentation the other day to the Alaska Association of Student Government, I, you know, I was just like, if I could jump around and if I could do the cartwheel now like I did 50 years ago, you know, I said I would have done it because they passed a resolution. So you get 233 students that are passing a, a resolution unanimously saying that we need to have suicide prevention awareness in our school system. That is an answer to prayer. I said they are giving me that silver spoon to say that it's okay to talk about suicide. And that's the message I've been giving for the last two years. Because just how much can you hold inside your heart? before it bursts and all the things that have piled on it come down like confetti. What problem are you gonna take care of first? I had a, I've been doing a lot of interviews just like Kate had said, you know, um, a lot of people asking for presentations, you know, and to talk to the young people and everything, but there's um, one that is gonna go on YouTube as soon as I get back, um, we're gonna do the shooting for that, but. I always said, you know, I felt bad sitting at home by myself, looking outside, crying to sad songs and everything on the radio. And so I said, okay, we need to turn this around, you know, because there's a lot of change going on right now. And so 
I call this little episode, Can, Can You Spare Five Minutes? So picture me at the corner, like uh, in Anchorage where my office is, a tutor in Patterson. It said, I stood at the corner of a street asking people if they could spare five minutes. No one stopped, no one looked at me. My regalia kept me warm from the cold elements of the winter storm. My heart sank lower than the soft, solid ground. The time we live in is fast and furious. No one wants to get involved. It takes too much time, and they've other things to do. What is the story behind the suicide we heard about last night? What was that person asking for five minutes? What did you do with that five minutes that you didn't share with them? So what did I do to change this picture? I called someone and said, I thought about you today. My heart soared like an eagle just after it finished feeding its babies in the nest. Or how about how you feel after sharing that Thanksgiving dinner with someone from church? Yep, that kind of feeling. It makes you want to hand out five minutes to everybody. It makes you want to do thing, good things over and over and over again. So if you could do me a favor here, put out your hand. Put out your hand and keep it there. Because there is someone at the other side of that hand reaching out for help. Help them. Pull them into safety. Pull them into a safe place. Can you spare five minutes? I dare you. The Alaska Native Tribal Health Consortium is going throughout Alaska, and we have programs. Um, I'm a if you looked at the bio, I'm a Safe Talk trainer, I'm a SIS trainer, I'm a level one critical incident stress management. I go into communities that you know have had four or five suicides and I talk with the family that's uh, closely affected. And sometimes I pale in comparison about the hurt that I experienced in my life because there are so many stories out there that people need to be heard. There's a quote that I like to throw into one of my presentations and it says, anything that tears your world apart demands change. And we're in the process now, we're going through that process of change and we need to begin healing. Just like Megan had said, we need to heal. We need that family warrior initiative. We all need to become warriors to make that difference. So that those numbers that we had, that's in the books that so many people pay attention to, I don't want to become, and I don't want to remain number one, the Alaska state of suicide across Alaska. And the only way that I can put that number down is to have your help. Kamashish. her son. Two days later, she lost her husband. And for somebody in a position like that, she wanted to die herself. But thankfully, God chose a different mission for her. And so now she tells her story in schools, in assemblies, times like this, so that other people can understand. And I, I'm really, you know, Barbara has always been one of my heroes. And I really appreciate her, her being here and her decision to stay and help so that nobody else should feel the pain that she did. We're going to open it up for, for questions. If anybody has any, any questions for these two terrific speakers, Rob.
President Norman Mariola. Um, he's up here uh, meeting with the Tongue Speeches Roundtable with me, and we are addressing issues such as suicide uh, across the channel right now. I just want to take this moment to thank um, both these wonderful women um, on what they're doing for our people. Uh, Barbara, that's a very touching story, and you, you carry a lot of strength, and thank you for that. And Megan, it's been a pleasure to work with you, and you still have two more months with us, so we're going to utilize you to the, to the best of your, you know, all your strengths. And, uh, Megan is a, a, a very, very talented woman, and uh, she, she has, she has uh, so much energy. I'm so grateful that we have her board with Central Council. So, uh, uh, oh, okay, thank you. Uh, uh, suicide, uh, you know, I've, I've lost a lot of friends to suicide, and after a while, the tears just quit flowing. It comes to a point where one needs to take, start taking action. On my Facebook page this morning, I, I, I called out to our Native brothers and sisters to start rising up, you know, such as the video we uh, seen earlier. And I would uh, ask Megan if I could get a copy of that uh, video. So we take it back home and share it with our people in Ketchikan. I'm up here on KIC business, but I also sit as your executive council, second vice president, and I wear different hats other than that too. So, um, and every one of those committees that I serve on that represent our native people, I'm going to do everything that I can to help combat this deadly scourge. So, uh, again, ladies, thank you very much. You're an inspiration to us all. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? attended my training last Saturday and it's a 12 week program, four hours a week, and it happens twice a year. And every community is encouraged to get involved. Like I said, it's offered internationally. Is could I just follow up with a, another question in that is it <coughs> I'm not quite understanding if it's like four young women or right now they have a program for young women well students ages 8 to 10 and they're actually trying to establish another program called girls on track which they should have by the fall would that be something that would happen like uh, after school or at a you know kind of working in the school district or is it a more of a private like a Girl Scout type organization? Yeah, it's an after school program, and there's going to be a coach at every school, and it happens for two hours, like on a Tuesday and a Thursday. And so, I think there's 15 students for every coach. Any other question or comment? I just want to say that I've had the opportunity to work with Megan in the Business and Economic Development Department, and I've been quite impressed with her and her efforts, you know, with the suicide prevention. And I've really allowed a lot of leeway for her to pursue these initiatives because I feel like the suicide prevention is very interconnected with a lot of other issues that we deal with in our native culture. You know, our, the, the suppression of our cultural activities, you know, the subsistence that we um, struggle to try to maintain, and you know, the, the economic development, it all fits in, and I think it all is a factor that could be contributing also to suicide prevention, but I'm just really happy that you know, such a, a smart young lady has taken this initiative, and I'm very happy that she's got this new position at SEARCH and will be furthering her ideas with her Youth Ambassador program. So thank you, Megan. Thank you.
Any other comment? I'd like to say um, please teach to Barbara for the strength and um, that most wonderful story and uh, appreciate everything that you're doing statewide. <coughs> I was interested in wondering how to get on the task force, you know, for suicide. So, um, on Friday, the Clinton Island Task Group is meeting at the BTRC at 8.30. That might be good to attend that and give you some ideas on whether, you know, that's something you could help, help on. That's going to be at the BTRC on Friday at 8.30. Okay. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Martin. <laughs> I just want to thank uh, Central Council for uh, allowing me to come into their house and listen to these very touching stories about <clears throat> about the young uh, youth in Alaska ending their lives for such a short time. I reflect back when I was up at AFN uh, just just this last year and uh, listened to. Uh, Rob Sanderson Jr. come up to his speech and said, actually speak louder than words. And I commend you, young lady, for stepping up to the plate and realizing that those that are in your age group and younger that are deciding to end the life so shortly, I commend you for that. And of course, uh, Barbara, you also, uh, it's nice to see you again. And, uh, We'll always keep you in our prayers, we'll keep our youth in our prayers. And I reflect back on what Mr. Uh, Mr. Martin said, you know, we've got to start holding our youth up. Let them, they realize that they mean something to us. Not because they're human, but they mean something that we love them. So again, thank you. Suicide Intervention Skills Training, and QPR, which is the Question, Persuade, and Refer. All of them at one point in time come up and say, um, you should not be afraid to ask them if they're suicidal. When I had to turn a friend of mine in one time, and um, actually it was um, my oldest sister, um, she was in so much pain with her um, rheumatoid arthritis and her uh, lupus that there's never going to be a time where she's going to feel okay. But she had left me a message and she said, I feel like taking on my pills. And so then I turned her in and she was on the 48-hour watch. She called me back after she got off of that and she said, um, I'm going to hate you for the rest of my life. So uh, I don't drive, so I got a cab and I went over to her apartment and I had the manager let me in. And I had this smirk on my face, and she looked at me, and she said, what are you smiling about? And I told her, I said, you told me that you were going to hate me for the rest of your life. I would rather have you hate me than to put flowers on your grave every year. So if, you're, if you know that someone is thinking, having thoughts about suicide, as a friend, don't be afraid to ask them. Because they, they probably needed someone to say, hey, I care about you, or I'm thinking about you, so I appreciate your question, Kulachish. Thank you. Last, uh, before Birmingham Convention, and I see some ANS members here, 
I asked our grand president to please let's help our young children with this suicide prevention that Mr. Martin was heading at the time. And to have the Grand Camp Convention theme relate, I know there have been a lot of things that relate to strengthening our young people. But I think we should double the effort to stand behind our precious young people that are lost in this world. And I think AMB is one of the head, the oldest organization that should pick up the banner and will try again. If I'm not successful this year, maybe the next year. But I want to thank these two precious women for your work and what you're doing. Good cheers, ho ho. Thank you. Uh, I want to make a comment first about myself. The first of May of 1996 was a day, the night before, like I did almost every day and every weekend, I drank myself crazy, smoked two packs of cigarettes, thinking that was okay. The next day, I wasn't sure what was happening when my stomach was hurting so hard. I thought I just drank too much and I smoked too much and a couple hours I'll be all right. Only to find out a couple hours later, I was in the emergency room with a major heart attack. Arriving at the Veterans Hospital in Seattle, not just the doctors, the nurses, the janitors, all the service people said to me, if you want to stay alive, get rid of the cigarettes, get rid of the alcohol, because what you're doing is suicide in slow motion. Every day when you're doing that, you're tying the noose a little bit tighter. And so again, if you want to stay alive, stop it. And I did. I'm glad I could say that today that I did stop it. But the effects of those things are a lifetime. At 77 years old, now I'm suffering from those things of my poor way of living. I want to I want to thank my uh, my brother's daughter Barbara for recognizing her aunt and me. We come from a very large family, and a lot of kidding around goes a long way. We never. We never leave a party or a family gather without picking on each other. And so I was thinking, uh, one of my daughters said, Dad, no, I'm 30 years old already and you're still calling me a baby. And I said, uh, you know, you might be 60 or 70 years old, and if I'm still alive, you'll still be my baby. And so we did that and joked around, and coming back to my favorite girl, I know I'll get in trouble, but I'll say, <laughs> Hey, puppy. <laughs> that was her nickname. And she might be six or seven years old, she'll still be mommy to me. Yeah, I just want to share that with you. And finally, finally I want to say this. This past week has been a real heavy heart for me. This morning in North Carolina, they laid a young man to rest in his funeral. Nobody knows how he died. We only know from the newspapers that there was shooting involved, but we don't know how. 
We know that the army is investigating, but he was buried this morning. And I just want to close with that, that we as a family experienced these sins all the time. We look to the Lord for help and guidance. And I pray that for you, baby, that you'll always be that way. Mary, I see you back there. My daughters, take good care of yourself. Thank you. I just want to make a quick remark. I'm also on a suicide prevention team with uh, Rob and and Megan. It, you know, it's, my remark is for encouragement, and I want to I want to share a singlet slogan with you. Katuniku. It takes a lot of courage. I don't want to thank these two girls, these two young ladies, for a lot of courage to be able to, to get up on the podium, to share their comments. Those comments are related to caring. The realization doesn't impact us until you are strapped with it, unless your face is there. Then we begin to understand. But I think, I want to thank each and every one of the people that are here that demonstrates that we care. We care and support. It's like red flagging. I said, we, we understand that we're losing a lot of our elders, not just our elders, and as well as our young, to cancer and other medical problems. And it's similar to suicide. It's really difficult. So that's why I used the illustration and saying that those people that are support and encouraged to keep on going and to occur through communication and activities like this, this afternoon. I want to thank you, Bill, for leading the charge, as well as St. Thomas. Thank you very much for the chief. Thank you, John. Okay, just to, just to wrap up, I would like to, to say one thing is that in Alaska, every day an Alaska Native, according to statistics, on the average of once a day an Alaska Native plans their suicide. And every three days, one is completed. At our suicide meeting this week, we heard from a young lady who attempted suicide five times. It was hard for her to tell the story. It was heartbreaking but it was something we needed to hear. And it wasn't until she spoke to her, her grandparents, and her grandparents made her understand how much the family needed her to be a part of that family, and how they, they needed for her to, to stay around, stick around and be, be a contributor to, to her people. And it's that time that she turned her life around. Every day, a young Alaska native makes a plan to commit suicide. Every day. In my lifetime, we won't see this problem turn around. Hopefully in Megan's lifetime, it will. We won't be ended, but in my lifetime, I hope we will turn it around. Because I think right now, there are more people that are willing to talk about suicide. The tribes are being involved in the... Um, AFN is, is involved too in, in suicide prevention. Some of our corporations even have it on their agenda. Thomas Future Land Brown Table put it on their agenda. I thought, what in the world are they doing? You know, they're they're kind of an environmental thing. Well they want healthy villages. 
And that's one of the ways to keep it, is, is to keep the kids alive. I used the analogy once of, of um, how when I was a little boy, my grandfather would go to Craig to visit with his sister. And on the way there from, from Cape to Craig, we would pass this village that was deserted. Some of the buildings were kind of standing, but they were ready to fall down. I remember asking my grandpa, what is that place? He said, that's Kassan. It's old Kassan. People there moved, and they allowed now living with other things. I never understood why they moved. But once I was thinking about that, that maybe your grandson will be taking his grandchild on a boat someplace, and they're going past your old village that your grandpa grew up on. And you see that the, the houses are kind of standing, but they're falling down, and it's totally deserted. Be it Cape, Angle, one of the places that we grew up on. And your great great grandchild will be asking his grandpa, what is that place? And the grandpa would say, ah, there once was a great village. But there's no people there anymore. They all died. And they all died because all the kids killed themselves. There was no hope. And so now the village is gone. In my lifetime, we will see this problem begin to turn, make that turn. It will happen. And I will do everything I possibly could to see that it does, as is the commitment of everybody on the State Suicide Council. Eric Morrison is the uh, leader now. And the council does all our, our work for us. And I really appreciate it. It was a loss for the Empire, but it was a gain for us. Eric helped write a story on suicide prevention when he was at the Empire. And he did a lot of research. And so he understands the problem of native suicide. And we, Alaska Natives, appreciate that area. We thank you from the bottom of our heart. As Harvey said, there was a memorial this morning at 9 o'clock our time for Les Williams. His family is in North Carolina, so they chose to have the have him buried there. We all want our children to, be, to come home and be buried here. We also feel for the family. Nobody knows why it happened, how it happened. We all know that, that he gave up his life for our country. Maybe it wasn't combative, but he was still there. And he was there because he wanted to, to save our country. As so many of our veterans have in the past, but willingly put their lives in danger for us. So thank you very much. Um, the two young ladies, we have a, a, a small gift for you. When you have a, a cup of coffee or a cup of tea and drinking out of this mug, remember this time, you made a difference to these people here when they, when they heard your story, when they heard your commitment. And we're all very proud of you. Thank you for being here. Thank you.